Hello everyone, welcome back to another Woodworking Wisdom. Today we're going to make a Kuxa cup, which is kind of like, um, a, so I think it's a Scandinavian kind of wilderness cup, which they, um, they it'll have a hole in the handle where you can um, put it on your belt or on your, your rucksack. Um, and it's kind of for um, for drinking and, um, and foraging and things like that. So um, you go out and collect your berries or your herbs or whatever it is you're kind of foraging. Um, so it's a nice little wooden cup, um, which yeah you can hang from your from your bag, your belt, that kind of thing. Um, we got a little bit of cherry um, for this one. Uh, they're usually made from birch, but I haven't got any uh, birch here. And this is a, a still a bit wet. This cherry. So there is a little bit uh, we need to do um, at the end of the process where you boil the cup. Um, and that will take out a lot of the moisture that's um, that's in the in the cherry, and then we're just waiting for that water to dry because that boiling action will drive out the sap of the cup, and then um, replace it with water, which dries a lot lot quicker. Um, but we'll explain a bit more about that um, at the end. Um, for now, we're going to do a little bit of marking out. Um, so we're going to mark out the rim and the the kind of handle of the of the cup. We're going to cut it on the bandsaw, and then um, we've got all sorts of tools that we can hollow this out with. We're going to use an Arbitec ball gouge um, and a couple of other tools just to kind of get down into there. Traditionally, this would have been done out in the wilderness with um, a kind of a hook knife or something like that. Um, we're going to get the power tools on this to make it um, a little bit quicker and to squeeze it into this hour. But of course, there's lots of different ways you could do this. Um, we're going to show you um, our kind of version of. This is the first one I've made, um, so we're going to give it a good go and, um, and see how it turns out. Okay, so let's get marking up. We're going to, um, I'm going to use a couple of round things which I found. This is a cushion mallet for, for a carving mallet. And if you notice, um, I'm not taking it right the way um, to the edge of our blank. I'm going to leave a little bit of space on here because when we cut this on the bandsaw, I want that extra bit of material so we can um, easily clamp it. We've got straight edges and it's not a round thing kind of twisting in the vise. So I've left um, probably about just under 10 mil all the way around. Um, that's going to give us plenty of room uh, to use this block as a, almost like a clamping aid. Okay, so got my Kirschen mallet. I've just kind of centered it on top there. I'm looking at the end here for any kind of signs of splitting or any kind of shakes or anything. And this is nice and clear. Um, if you cut a blank like this, it's really important that you keep it kind of airtight um, while you're working on this. If you're not going to do it in one hit, um, make sure that you've got something like this, a little kind of Ziploc bag, um, the polyurethane bag um, that you can then just pop your blank in, keep the moisture in it because we don't want this drying out and splitting, especially once we've got that um, hollow in there. Um, so yeah, make sure you've got a bag if you're doing this from um, from wet or or green timber. Um, we check the end here for for splits and cracks, and I'm just going to literally draw around this uh, mallet. So that's gonna that kind of represents the outside rim of the bowl bowl or cup, whatever we're, we're calling it. I think it's a cup, really. And then I've got a Pringles lid um, that we're just going to use as well. Anything round will do, a teacup. Uh, you can get your compass out. Um, but I'm just using things that we've got lying around. Um, I think I'm kind of happy with that wall thickness. Okay. So we're looking at the thickness of the of the material there. I'll probably just use this as a um, as a kind of um, you know like a template and, and maybe not come right up to the edge um, straight away but we can kind of work that out as we're going along. If we feel um, the tools that we're using are a bit aggressive and there's potential for it to pop out the side um, we'll just keep that wall thickness a little bit um, a little bit thicker. Cool and then we need to do a handle um, 
I think we're just going to do a straight handle coming out of the back here. So, um, want a nice wide handle on it, and I'm just going to put a little curve into that straight. Um, but just free handing it for now. And then we can tweak the shape once we get carving. Okay. Um, and I think also, let's put a little bit of shape on the side here just so we know kind of where we're going. I'm going to use a square just to bring this. You can see that the block's not actually um, totally square, but this is just going to give me, again, a rough guide. So I can bring that line across here. And then down the side here. Sorry if I'm leaning into the cameras there. And then we've got, you know, we can leave this section here. And we've got this bit to kind of play with with our handle shape. And I'm going to do kind of like a hooked handle. Um, but again, we can always change our mind if we're not interested in that shape. I'm going to bring that down, just using my um, wrist as a kind of pivot point. And swinging it up. Remember we've got that bit of material there, so just kind of sketching it out roughly at the moment. These do have a rounded bottom. I'm going to keep a slight flat on it so we can put it down without it rolling over. And just as a rough shape, we've got this, and then we've got our um, kind of circles on the top. Okay, cool. So let's cut this on the bandsaw. Um, we're going to cut this top face here, and then we're probably going to um, use the hot melt glue to glue them back on. Okay, good. Okay, so onto the bandsaw. I've set my height here uh, with my guides. Um, so all the guide bearings are just above the workpiece, so we're not going to foul on that. Um, and that way it offers support just above here, stop any drift of the blade and things like that. Um, so, yeah, we're going to try and cut this in one hit if we can. Um, it's quite a nice constant curve on this. Um, and we've got our 3 8 uh, 6 blade in there. So 3 8 wide, um, 6 teeth per inch. Okay, just going to pop the extractor on. And we're just going to cut around this um, this line. So you may have noticed there where we tried to change direction on this um, more of a tight curve here. Um, it, it just stalled the bandsaw a little, but this is a wet piece of material and it's going to grab a little bit more. Um, I'm going to snap my um, mold just along the, sh the short grain there. Um, and you can see in here we get a little build up of, um, of the, the dust. And quite often, you know, that can trap the blade or grab the blade a little, um, and that is what stops it from kind of travelling around that curve um, so easily. So, 
we've got our bits we want to keep these these are going to be useful when we want to clamp so instead of clamping on this round we've got something that's the same size that we can put in the vise and just grip it there um, we may need to take off a little bit here just so that that fully grabs um, but yeah that's ready um, to be glued back on and we can come around this side now okay so we've got our blank um, we cut these sides off on the bandsaw and I've just trimmed a little tiny bit off of here um, just so we can get them glued in um, otherwise these butt up against one another so hot glue gun's been um, doing its thing just putting a little zigzag quite central on there and then Just gluing that back on, flip it over, and we're going to do the same this side. Good, just giving it a little squeeze. Um, and that hot melt glue should pretty much set as soon as it hits the cold timber, um, so we don't need to hang around too much for that. Just unplugging my glue gun, and then it's back on the bandsaw. Okay, so back on the bandsaw. Um, just need to adjust the height, so I'm just I'm doing a little uh, thumb screw on the back here, resetting the height of the guides. And remember, um, this is quite a, a sharp turn in the curve here. So I think I'm going to, to cut up to that point from there, try and get as much around this curve as I can, and then backtrack and come in this way. Okay. So extractor on, I've got my goggles on. one to give me a bit more room for the back of the blade just to swing around. So a quarter inch blade would, would breeze around this but this is a bit more of an all rounder because I like to do my straight cuts in here as well. Um, let's just stop that a moment. So I'm just come to the kind of um, the, the real sharp turn there um, I'm going to now bring this cut up to meet it um, instead of trying to force it around that curve so always turning the bandsaw off wait for that blade to stop before really getting in there and removing our blank now we've just got this curve here to do. There we go. We've got a slight flat on the bottom for our cup to sit on. Uh, we've cut round this shape and also around this shape. Um, there are some bits we need to shape off but we'll do that um, in the carving process. Um, that looks to be a nice little kind of shaped handle um, and I was using that to get a bit of leverage as I was coming around that curve there. That last little bit of the cut um, I felt my my hand was a bit too close so bring out the push stick um, and feed that through there. I put an ever such a slight flat on this curve here, but that's fine. We can work that in with uh, with the abrasive or through the carving process as well. Okay, so we still got our flat sides. That's still going to grip really well in the um, in the vise. Now we can work on hollowing our um, our bowl, as it were. So we've done our bits on the bandsaw. 
we've now got to hollow out that bowl and I'm going to use um, the uh, Narbatec um, product um, we're going to use the ball gouge and the mini ball gouge um, so let's just come down onto the uh, bench here um, so that's the ball gouge there um, really great little tool uh, great for hollowing things like this out um, what it does have is um, the, the shape of the body here if we're going directly down um, you can see that this ball touches on before the cutter. Um, to, to be able to cut this we usually just bring that over a slight angle and because this is quite a steep walled and deep cut I think we're going to go with the, um, the mini ball gouge because with that one the cutter is actually engaging if we go straight down. So we're going to start with the mini one um, see how deep we can get and we may come back to the, the ball gouge but if we can do it all with with one tool that would be great now a couple of things I just wanted to to point out first of all we're going to start using a rotary tool and I've got um, ties at the front of my um, my kind of pinny or um, overalls type thing here so I'm going to change into a smock because there is the potential using a rotary tool that this could get snagged in and, and it'll pull me in. So I'm going to change my um, my penny to a smock and also just um, something on the grinder before we get going. Isolated before we change any of the cutters or anything like that. Really important that that is isolated, that we don't switch it on whilst we're, um, whilst we're changing cutters. And also I've just taken the guarding off. And this is just a normal four and a half inch grinder. This is one of the Makita ones. Um, so any grinder will do. Um, yes, yeah, so I've taken the um, guarding off. Because this isn't going to throw great big chips. Um, and also, it, it, while we start working on it, um, that is going to start to foul on certain parts. So I've taken off the guarding. Isolate the, um, the the grinder. We've got a little lock, a little spindle lock at the back of the of the grinder here. We've got a little button. We just push that in. That locks the spindle, and then we can pop the mini bowl gouge straight on and give that a little tighten. Okay. Don't go mad with the tightening. Obviously, we've got a thread on here, and this works against the thread, so it is self-tightening uh, once we get going. Okay, always, always make sure your little rocker switch is um, off before plugging the, the um, grinder in. Um, so I'm going to leave that isolated whilst I just change my um, change into a smock, and then away we go. We can start doing some carving. Okay, so I've got my smock on now. No ties at the front here that you know um, might get an entanglement issue with our rotary tool. Um, the little mini ball gouge is fitted to the grinder um, we're going to hollow this out now okay there's a couple of ways you could do this you could drill down to depth um, that you want to go to um, you could use a forzen a bit to to uh, remove a lot of this waste I think I'm just going to go straight in with the mini ball gouge get down to depth see how it's working on these um, on the kind of walls of the of the mug um, or cup um, so we're going to kind of play it by ear a little bit. We may switch out to the to the bigger ball gouge, um, and we've got some other tools in that precision carving system that the um, the mini ball gouge comes out of. This little tool here is really good, the little sanding drum. Um, so we may use that as well. Let's see how it goes, and um, and we're going to start carving this out. Remember, always keep the grinder isolated and the the rocker switch is off. Uh, before we plug in. Also just another little tip is um, have a little extractor close by. So I've got an extraction hose here um, just to clear out that waste. Once we get down a little bit there's not much waste going to be coming out so it's all going to be sat in there. So I've got an extractor on standby and an extraction hose which I've just sort of looped through the leg of the of the bench. Um, I've got goggles on as a precaution. Um, I'm not wearing gloves or anything, but of course, um, I, you know, sometimes you can wear a glove on the on the hand that holds the body. I wouldn't have a glove up on this hand because it's a bit too close to the kind of action.
Um, so yeah, um, we're plugged in now with the with the grinder. Um, hearing protection is kind of optional. If you feel that it's starting to make a raspy noise or it's it's hurting your your ears, um, of course put um, your ear defenders on. And I think I'm just going to grab mine just to have them again on standby um, if we need them. Okay. So let's have a little look at how this works. So we're going to, you know, this will work um, plunging straight down um, into the material, um, but we're going to have a little test first. Remember, you've got a lot of material to take out here, so I would start in the centre. I wouldn't start right up, um, you know, near our edge. Um, start at the centre, get used to how the tool's working, and then perhaps we can start to adventure a bit closer to the to the walls of our cup. Okay, so grinders plugged in, switch on. So I'm going to slide this switch up, and then just catch it at the top there, so slide up and then push in this, this little lip at the top here. That will switch the grinder on and it will stay on. We don't need to keep that finger depressed. A um, couple of other things. Watch out for these air vents. We don't want to hold the grinder back here. We want to hold it up here, otherwise it's going to get very hot. And also these can fill with shavings. Um, there's little air intake. You can see one's just sort of sneaked in there. Um, so we want to keep that clear if we can. Again, we can use the extractor just to pull out any loose debris. Okay, so we're going to get going. So switching the grinder on. So just want to show you a couple of little things and I'm going to isolate the, um, the grinder while we do it. Let's just get rid of that. Okay, so we're getting a, um, we can do a nice undercut if we wanted to, if we had a bit more material. Um, but with this tool, um, you want to just gently touch on and then we can put a little bit of pressure downwards or to the side, perhaps roll it over a little if it, and it will find a kind of comfortable place. Um, at certain angles it will chatter, so it's just finding that sweet spot and then just keep rotating or moving on to a different section. Um, we're going to bring all of this material out. Oh, let's plug it back in. That always helps. Again, with the grinder switched off, we can switch it on and back to business. So you can see how much material we've removed already. Quite a bit there. We're just going to be careful not to undercut any of this. Um, that we're going straight down. And um, yeah, we're not going to break through the sides of our uh, project. I'm going to push that a bit further down in the vise. That's going to help um, get more of these jaws engaged and stop a bit of the vibration.
So now I'm working on this side um, a little bit um, and, and taking that down a bit deeper than I am this side. So as I come round with the tool, we're getting a bit of a chatter when we get to this point. Uh, because of the way that that, um, that little blade is angled, the little ring blade, um, and as we're coming across here, that full face of the blade is, is touching on here, and it's just um, causing a little bit of chatter. So what we'll do is we'll work on this section, we'll bring that right down, then we can turn this around in the vise, and then we can still work in this area, but the, the blank is the other way around. And I'm not sure if you can see in here, we're getting actually a really good finish. Um, I know we're getting this bit of tear out, but we've just explained that. Around this section, we've got a really good finish coming on. All right, a little bit lumpy and bumpy, but we can sort that out with a bit of finesse afterwards. So, just going to check the depth of this now. So, a flat rule, and I'm going to pop the, the little six inch rule in behind, and then just bring that out. And we are about an inch and three quarters deep. And the blank is, let's get it out. So the blank's about three and a half inches. Um, so we can, you know, carry on. Let's, let's start getting that um, that material at the bottom out. These walls look just a little bit rough at the moment, but we've got plenty of um, other tools that we're going to use to tidy this up. What we need to look out for is we've got a slight undercut here um, that it doesn't go past that line. So I'm going to trim this little area here make sure we're not coming past our, um, our little indicator on the top there and then I'm going to go a bit deeper and, and just keep working away at it. Don't rush this process, we don't want to, um, you know, the more you kind of rush the less control you have, um, so just take it stage by stage. Now, a good place to stop and sort of show you how we're getting on. Um, you know, it takes a little bit of time, but like I say, don't rush this. We've got quite a deep bowl there. I've been careful not to undercut any of those um, faces. We've got a fairly straight wall coming down. Um, 
you can always, um, if you if you did undercut, just um, slightly enlarge this um, uh, hole at the top here. But that's not too bad for you know the amount of time we've been doing it. We're getting down to depth now. I think we've got about half an inch to go um, before we kind of come to the bottom. And I'll leave a fairly heavy bottom. Like I say, um, we want this to stand up um, when it's done. Um, so I'm going to leave a little bit of extra material in the bottom um, so it's just got that weight and it doesn't tip. Okay, so not far off a little bit further down and then we can start to look at finishing this and making it a little bit smoother a little bit tidier Okay, so now we've removed the waste. Um, we've gone down a good kind of three inches there. Um, <coughs> we can always remove a bit more from the bottom if we wanted to, um, if we feel the blanks a little bit too deep, because um, I'm happy with that as, a, as the hollow of, of the cup. Okay, we've still got that flat edge if we wanted to take it back to the bandsaw, um, or we could use something to, to carve that off. Um, I'm probably going to um, just take a little bit, give us more of a flat just by whizzing off a little um, little bit on the bandsaw, maybe a half inch on the bandsaw. Okay, so I'll do that and we'll come back and we'll, we'll finish up um, the inside there. Remember we've got that nice flat stable face if we want to cut on the bandsaw. Okay, so just remove that little slither on the bandsaw Remember we had that sh nice flat face to sit on and I could run this part on the fence of the bandsaw. Okay, so I'll just take it off a little, well it's probably about half inch actually, it's not less of a slither, more of a, a wedge. <laughs> so um, yeah, so that brings this uh, the, the base down a little bit. I felt we were deep enough with our cup there and um, there was actually about an inch left to go. So I've just trimmed off half an inch and then um, yeah, our little cup is, um, they're, they're quite sort of short and dumpy um, cups. Um, so actually, looking in there, we've got a really good finish off of that, um, that bowl gouge. I have just tested the, um, the little contour sander. This is another great product from, um, from Arbitech. It's a little squidgy disc. Um, so I have just quickly whizzed this face on it, but you can see we've still got a little bit of tear out and things here, but the shape is actually pretty good. There's no, um, you know, really deep low spots, um, so really we just need to knock off those high spots with the, with the contour sander, um, and then it's going to look really nice and smooth on the inside. Okay, a lot of hand sanding in there if you if you were um, you were going to sand this by hand, um, but we're going to use the the grinder again. Make sure it's isolated. So let's put our project back in the vise. Make sure the grinder's isolated so it's not plugged in. We can find the lock spot on the spindle. We can take off our. Um, mini turbo, uh, sorry, mini ball gouge, and we are now 
attaching the contour sander attachment. Quite a rough grit on this. I think this feels about 80, um, 80 or 100, something like that. And remember, that's going to flex as we get down into um, the kind of curvature in this. Um, and also, it's going to kind of um, flex around the curve here. Um, so great to get into awkward shapes. Um, as long as they've got that nice smooth round, um, this is going to do a great job of, um, of blending and, and, um, and finishing the inside of this cup. And we're doing all of this while we've still got our, um, our bits here that fit around the rim nicely because um, we're going to have to shape the outside soon. Um, so make sure you do, you kind of finish your bowl to the point that you're happy with it um, before you start shaping the outside. So I can feel it's a lot smoother. I have got a slight overhang here. So what I'm going to do is just pop in with my, um, my um, spoon knife, a kind of curved knife uh, from FlexCut, and just remove some of that, um, the high spot here. Otherwise, it's a lot to ask for the sander, and this will whip it off quite quickly. So just knocking off that high spot, really. As we come around here, that grain direction is just picking up on that. And that's probably where it's kind of thrown the uh, mini ball gouge off, is that um, as we're coming around here, we've got the end grain coming out, and it's just picking up and resisting on that. So. Just take away the worst of it with the um, little flex cut knife here. I'm using that grip where I'm closing my hand. Um, so thumb on the project and then close your hand to take the cut. And that way we can't kind of, um, we're not dragging it around and it potentially coming out of the cut and um, and hurting us. So any little high spots that we can just whiz off with this. And got a little low spot there, so a little bit of work around that one. Sometimes quite hard to um, to see these things until you you've given it a little bit of sanding, and then they become really obvious. So just taking away those high spots, working back to the low spot. I've got a little one in there. But you can see, not taking much material off with the knife. That's all dust. And then we can go back to our sanding.
So we've got a pretty smooth interior in there now. Um, there's a couple of little um, bits, but I would just carry on with that one really. Um, carry on till you've got rid of all your little low spots. I've got a slight undercut around the rim, but I'm kind of happy with that. I think it looks all right. Perhaps a little bit more to do in there. So just tipping the project up. Got a good grip in the in the vise. Okay, pretty happy there. Um, again, there's just a little bit and down the bottom I want to attack with before we change tools. So we've just um, just sanded the inside face there. Um, yeah, so we can turn this over and do the outside. Okay, so we've sanded the inside, um, and really just to get everything nice and fairly even in there. Remember, um, we don't want to bring this up to an actual finish because this cup needs boiling, um, and this is going to boil for an hour in some salted water and to take all the impurities and stuff out. Um, so we don't want to get that super smooth and then boil it and that raises all the grain. Um, so, you know, as long as we've got a, a fairly decent, um, you know, smooth finish, um, we're, we're good to go. Let's start working on the outside. This hot melt glue gun um, didn't adhere as strong as it usually does because um, I think we're on a wet timber. Um, but... Grab my mallet back, so the same mallet that we used to um, mark the um, thing out. Just going to pop that in the vise for now and just knock off. Just need a little shock to loosen off that glue, and then hopefully, this piece will just come off. There we go, and we'll just get rid of that glue gun as uh, glue at the same time. And we can see we're coming towards our shape now. Okay, um, we need to shape the outside, um, so we need to to round some of this off. Remember, we want a, a flat on the on the base. So I might just go back to my Pringles lid, perhaps a little bit too big. What else have we got? Thank you. So we've got our little lens cap. Mm, a bit bigger. I'm being fussy now. But I'm just going to put a rough circle on here so we keep that flat. And it's fairly central. That's going to work well for us. Okay, um, and that's really an area to avoid rather than we're going to make that the actual foot shape um, just so we don't miss out and, um, and carve it all away and we've got a, a kind of round bottom. Although I have seen a lot of these um, Kuxa cups with round bottoms. Um, okay, so we're just going to rough off some of this excess um, around the, the bottom here. Uh, take some of the weight away and then start introducing a curve that way because we've got a, um, a curve coming around this way we now need to put that on and I don't think I'm going to take much off we're just going to soften it in um, be careful now as you um, close the the jaws down on the um, on the vise we don't want to crack that okay so So 
so we can kind of split off so we're working with the grain we can split some of this off so there's a nice roughing cut cutting that side and I'm just trying to keep it nice and even So we've taken a similar amount off both um, sides. So they're looking good there. I'm just going to tidy this side up. Make sure those aren't splits. And they give it a cut face rather than those kind of torn fibers. Good, we can knock these corners off here. Again, we're not worried about the finish at this point. Oops. We are literally just taking some of the worst of the, um, the kind of hard edges off that we can then blend them. I mean, probably, I'm feeling like we should get the um, the little belt sound of the power f power file on this. And my fave tools, but again, just softening all those kind of ninety degree um, corners off. Always working away from myself with the um, chisel. Cherry smells really nice. It's working really nicely too. It's just um, so the green's running that way, so I'm coming across here. Off of this flat, just down at a slight angle. Again, that's going to save us a bit of time on the old um, power file. And this comes off really quickly. And you could shape this uh, using carving. There's no reason um, why you couldn't leave that nice um, kind of carved texture on it. At the moment, I'm just roughing it off. But take a little bit more care, and you can, um, you know, leave a lovely carved finish on this. So I'm just feeling it. We want this kind of nice and rounded. Your hands will give you so much information of where there's any little lumps and bumps, more so than your eyes at this stage. So I'm just kind of holding the cup and just feeling for any kind of obvious uh, lumps and bumps, and we can just knock them off. Constantly changing my body position so that we're working with the grain or cutting a, uh, with the grain. Okay, so we've just got a bit here. I'm going to take off. Okay, so that feels nice now. It feels um, rounded. Um, we've knocked off all those bits. Now we just want to. Um, we're going to use the power file and just blend all that in. I've got a little bit here off the um, uh, where we cut on the bandsaw as well earlier. So actually, let me just chisel that off. 
and just come across the grain. And this chisel matches that curve there quite well. So I'm just going to clean up the bottom of that as well while I'm here. Okay. Power file. Okay, a great tool this one. Um, love this tool. It's going to really quite quickly whiz um, some of this material off. So we've still got a bit of that glue from the glue gun on there. Let's get rid of that. Just use my, um, my straight chisel. Because we don't want this clogging the abrasive. Which it will. So that's the glue. Now I just want to show you how kind of quickly that um, that works. You know, we've got this uh, nice sort of smooth blended side here, and then we've got all the facets that we got from the carving. Okay, you can see like lots of little straight flat spots. Okay, um, and I'll show you how quick it is to to blend all of that into a into a kind of constant curve. So I think if this part, we real time this bit and um, we can see how quickly it's done. Okay, so we've got that nice gentle smooth in there, a bit of work to do around this bit but you can see how that kind of curve comes around, see if we can get it in profile how kind of smooth that curve is becoming in just, you know, 30 seconds a minute, 30 seconds, something like that so we're coming to okay I think maybe we'll just soften those um, those lines there, and then this will be ready for the boiling pot. If you can see them, we're getting a couple of little scorch marks on the end grain there. So um, we're just going to be extra light with the um, with the power file. Okay, so happy with our kind of basic shape. I've done a little bit of blending around here. A few more jobs we need to do. We need to shape this handle in. Um, we also need to drill a hole through this. This gets suspended on a cord from your belt or your uh, for your backpack. Um, so we need to drill a hole. We're going to countersink it. Um, and a little bit of shaping, like I say, on the, on the handle there. Just make it a bit more comfortable to hold. So I've kept all my offcuts from the bandsaw, um, and we want the bit that just sits under the, the handle, which is here. Thank you. So that's going to sit in that way. That's just going to give me a little bit more support in the vise, um, and it's going to help with any kind of breakout. So let's get that held in the vise pushing it down onto our uh, kind of little off cut and try and grip that as best we can good so you could mark this with a little pencil first I think I'm just going to go in freehand these um, lip and spur drill bits with that little spur you can get that really 
um, kind of accurate. Thinking about where we want that hole, I think straight down through that middle bit, just eyeballing it, get that little um, spur centered, make sure my drill's on its fast setting, and just try and keep it nice and straight. There we go, so we've gone all the way through and we want our little um, countersink. There we go. So countersinks, this is one of the kind of snail type cutters. And I'm just going straight in that hole. We're going to do a nice big countersink on this one because if that's hanging on a cord, um, we want that cord to be able to swing so it's not getting um, kind of stiff. We may struggle with access to this back one. Let's give it a go. If not, we can always take any nasty bits off by hand. And just be careful when we're gripping this in the vise now. The grain direction is running that way, so if we put too much pressure on that hollow, we could produce a crack, especially since we've now got that hole in. So I'm just lightly gripping on and popping that countersink both sides okay so we've got one here one here that's going to allow the cord to kind of swing freely good so last little bit of shaping um, and again, I think I'm going to use the power file, but of course you could um, use um, your carving knives. That would make a really nice little finish. Um, and you could go over this and texture the whole thing if you like. Um, give it that kind of hand carved look. Um, so you could use your hand tools, your, your carving knives. Just make sure we're using them nice and safe. Um, one hand gripping the project. We've got our two thumbs, and we're kind of pivoting off of this thumb to produce our cuts. We're not pushing that through like that. Okay, nice controlled little cuts. And we can just start putting the shape in. That looks it makes a big difference just knocking off that, that hard edge. Good. We do have some hard edges come around here. I would just really gently sand those in. We want to keep the definition um, and not round them over, but also this bit's going to be in your mouth, so you don't want that hard edge. We'll just gently put a bit of abrasive around that in a bit. So, back to the old power file. going to plug this one in quickly. So remember, gentle grip in the vise. This is a bit stronger on the base, so you can um, grip it a bit harder down the bottom, just not across the rim there. And we're just going to shape this handle in. So I'm just changing the angle from right on the upright here and then taking off a little bit and just bringing back each stroke and that's going to round that edge over. And we've got our air filter on in here. That's going to take um, any of the airborne dust off. Um, but you can use a mask. Um, just going to angle it up a little. Make sure that cord's not going to get.
Okay, good. That's got a nice soft curve on it now. I need to do the underside. Just going to take off this hard. So we've got some little bandsaw line here. Um, I'm going to use the shape of that just to remove those hard lines. Um, and like I say, we are going to boil this, and that's going to swell all these fibers. Um, so that will come out really easily. But let's get rid of the worst of it by using the shape of this nose to follow that little curve in there. really quick and easy oh that feels better already in the in the hand again we've got some little bandsaw marks there we can we can sort that out that's made that whole hand a lot softer and a lot more comfortable to grip um, and of course with that cord on there that's going to give you a real good grip on your on your mug the, the cord will hang out the back here good let's clean up this rim we've got a couple of marks on the vise on there so we're just going to quickly whiz over that we'll hand sand this um, hard edge in and then we are good for the boiling pot Let's just get this last little bit. Good. Now, while I'm um, hand sanding this in, um, I'm not going too fine. What have we got here? A bit of, um, I think it's, it's 240. Let's go 150. So just a little bit of a cloth back abrasive, this is a 150 grit. Like I say, we're not coming up to a finish on this because it's going to be boiled. And while I, I'm um, just sanding in this, we'll explain to you what you need to do, um, what the next stages are um, to complete this cup. So really, I'm just going to knock the hard edge off so it's just a little bit more comfortable. We're not sanding it till it's a, a you know like a rounded thing. We want to keep that definition in there, um, but just taking off the very edge. Um, so once we've got this this done, the next stage would be to to boil it. Um, this cherry is um, antimicrobial, so it's um, it will kill any germs that kind of um, get in the in the pores of the timber um, we are going to seal this with a with a food safe oil um, but like I said before this needs to go in a boiling pot of salted water um, for for an hour um, that's going to dry the the cup it's actually going to um, to drive out the sap when we boil it um, and then that's going to dry, water dries a lot quicker than the, than the sap. So it will be saturated with water, um, but you can slowly dry that. And there's lots of different methods online if you wanted to check them out. Um, some people keep them in cardboard boxes and stuff, tissues and things in there, and that will slowly in, um, draw the moisture out. Um, I like the method where you use a plastic bag and um, you can pop your cup in there, seal it up, and then every day you take your cup out, you reverse the bag and all the steam and condensations on that outside face, you pop it back in there, seal
seal it back up and then you leave that another day. And every day you come back and you turn your bag inside out and that's really going to slowly draw the moisture out of our cup and prevent it from splitting. Um, then you need to, um, th there are again lots of differing advice on how to seal this. Um, th the kind of surefire way would be a hard lacquer um, but I don't, I'm not a massive fan of the lacquers and I think once, if you were to kind of, um, you know, as this is getting used, that's going to slowly break up. If the cup starts to move, it's going to affect the finish. Um, so I would oil this. I would use a, a mineral oil or a food safe oil. And you want to totally um, cover this, saturate it with, with the oil. Um, give it a good sort of 10 minutes to really pull that in. Wipe off the excess uh, once this is dry. Um, and then allow that oil to dry and you need to do that about six to seven times um, to, to really kind of seal the cup. You don't want to be drinking milk or anything like that out of it. This will take hot liquids, um, so teas and coffees, but no milk I'm afraid. Um, but yeah, a nice little cup, uh, interesting little thing um, to be worn at your belt through some sort of cord or hung on a backpack. So there we have it, a cuck's a cup. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and join us back here on Woodworking Wisdom for more free content on little woodworking projects. We'll see you again soon.